Hello, my name is Vikram Arya and I'm the president of the American College of Clinical Pharmacology, a premier clinical pharmacology society dedicated to advancing the discipline of clinical pharmacology and ultimately enhancing patient care. It is my distinct pleasure to invite all of you to attend and participate in the 50th annual meeting of the college. In 2019, the college celebrates its 50th anniversary and it gives us a unique opportunity to reflect on the milestones over the last 50 years and enhance the opportunities for the next 50 years. In 2019, the program committee is tirelessly working on putting an exciting program together with some events specifically geared towards the student tra and trainee professionals of the society. We are proud to offer continuing medical education and continuing pharmacy education credits at no extra cost. Again, it is an honor and distinct pleasure to invite you to the 2019 annual meeting in Chicago. I am Bikram Arya and I am ACCP. Greetings, I'm David J. Greenblatt and uh, I've been a member since 1973, so I believe that makes me the living member with the longest tenure of membership. So when I first uh, came to the organization back in that time, it was very small, probably no more than 100 members. It had, in 1979, morphed from the American College of Clinical Pharmacology and Oncology to the American College of Clinical Pharmacology. So. The headquarters was in Philadelphia. It was a New York, Philadelphia organization. Headquarters in the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy. And we didn't have an executive director. We shared one with the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy. At that time, I had the pleasure of knowing a number of the founding fathers, including Benjamin Kolesnik, Nathaniel Quitt, Duncan Hutchin and McKean Cattell. So I had the pleasure of working with all of those individuals who started the college. The first president that I got to work with was a guy named Ray Alquist. And that was awesome for me because he actually, uh, back in 1948, actually discovered the beta adrenergic receptor. And he received many awards for that. And there I was working with a uh, a legend in basic and, and clinical pharmacology. Uh, the first meeting that I intended was in about 1973-74 and in those days the meetings were held in Atlantic City on the boardwalk in some place called Haddon Hall. Don't know if it still exists but very small meeting about 50 people. Fast forward to the present um, we now have a full-time executive director and staff who work with her we have permanent headquarters here in D.C. We have some close to a thousand members. Annual meetings are growing and growing with in the range of 450 or so attendees and they are their major scientific meetings. The, uh, the society's principal journal, the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology, which, is, which was the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology and New Drugs when I first joined the organization, now is one of the major and most important journals in clinical pharmacology, the discipline worldwide. We've also, since 2012, uh, added a new journal called Clinical Pharmacology and Drug Development, of which I'm the editor-in-chief. That is a journal that's growing. It's now indexed by Index Medicus. We have eight issues per year, going up shortly to 12 issues per year dealing with clinical pharmacology research, largely done in the course of drug development. So I've been able to watch over the years this organization grow tremendously into a, a major worldwide uh, impact society for clinical pharmacology. Oliver Grantman. I am a clinical associate professor at the University of Florida. Among the many professional organizations that are available to you, ACCP is one of the top to consider. The American College of Clinical Pharmacology 
has helped me throughout my entire career from being a student to a young academic to now a seasoned professional to develop my uh, professional skills uh, but also especially to finding new networks, to finding new colleagues, to making new friendships. It is not only a professional organization but especially a growing family of professionals that help me as a professional but also as an individual grow in the profession of clinical pharmacology. So I encourage you to engage with ACCP as ACCP will embrace you as a member of the professional community. I am Oliver Grantman and I am ACCP. Hi, I'm Christine Brenquist. I have been a member of ACCP since 2011 and I've served on the membership committee since 2014. My first ACCP encounter outside of the Journal of Clinical Pharmacology was when I attended my first annual meeting back in the early 2000s. I specifically remember walking away from that meeting and thinking, wow, what a great intersection for pharma, academia, and regulatory groups come together to have fair and unbiased scientific discussions around clinical pharmacology and drug development. The assortment of clinical pharmacologists gives ACCP a very diverse group of members who not only bring their wealth of knowledge and experiences to the table, but also who really want to focus on discussing and learning about the science of clinical pharmacology as it relates to drug discovery, through drug approval, and beyond. And they do this without any associated hidden agendas. ACCP provides us members with several opportunities for sharing our experiences via meetings, webinars, and journals. Since, uh, since ACCP is ACCME and ACPE accredited, we as members with our free access to journals and webinars throughout the year have ample opportunities to obtain CE credits. Finally, from a logistics standpoint, what is truly remarkable about ACCP is the fact that ACCP maintains a high financial standard, so we are able to offer all of these benefits and more at a reasonable cost year after year. I am Christine Brinkless and I am ACCP. I'm Jim Burris, Professor of Medicine and Pharmacology at Georgetown University School of Medicine. I'm also the Chair of the Credentials Committee for the American College of Clinical Pharmacology, ACCP. As Chair of that committee, I have the opportunity to review the curricula vitae and letters of recommendation for applicants for membership of the college. And I would, am very pleased to say that the college is open to membership for all categories of people interested in the science and clinical applications of drugs in human beings. That includes student members, regular members of the college, and senior people in the field who are uh, qualified as fellows of the college. I encourage you to apply if you're not a member and to continue your membership if you already are a member. ACCP has been my main professional organization for uh, since 1983 and uh, I encourage you to be part of our group. We are ACCP. Hi, I'm Lorraine Rush. I'm the president of High Point Clinical Trial Center and I've been a member of ACCP for over 15 years. Um, it's a really important organization for us in the business and myself as a scientist. We exhibit regularly and routinely as an opportunity to share our science and our services with our clients in a congenial environment. For me personally, membership's been really important because it allows me to catch up on the entire breadth of the clinical pharmacology field, 
not just the slice that I focus in on in the translational medicine area. Additionally, the college is a really nice congenial setting with a lot of people that are really interested in helping each other um, scientifically, professionally, and personally. And then um, finally, as exhibitors to the conference, we actually have done this for over 10 years at various companies. Um, and the goal is to foster the exchange of science and technology and business with our clients and bring solutions to our clients in that particular venue. That's why I exhibit, that's why I attend. Uh, my name is Lorraine Rush and I am ACCP. Congratulations ACCP. My name is Bernd Maibom and I'm a past president of ACCP. ACCP has, over the last two decades, established a not only presence in North America, but also a global presence with members in Asia, Europe and beyond. This gives members of ACCP the wonderful opportunity to use the educational events to network and build professional alliances with clinical pharmacologists all over the world that become colleagues and friends. The high quality of the educational events at ACCP is ensured through AACME and ACPE accreditation that allows the organization to provide professional credits to its members. My name is Dan Maibum and I am ACCP. Sagar. I'm currently the uh, National Chair or National Professor of the Indian Council of Medical Research, Government of India. I've been before Professor and Head of Clinical Pharmacology and then Director, Dean and Vice Chancellor at the GS Medical College, KEM Hospital, Mumbai. Uh, my association with the American College of Clinical Pharmacology of approximately uh, 15 years or so. Uh, as a fellow of the ACCP and then as the president of the South Asian College of the American College of Clinical Pharmacology, an affiliate of it, has been the most rewarding, extraordinarily rewarding, uh, both intellectually, scientifically, academically, and socially, very, very fine. Uh, I'm very, very thankful to the ACCP uh, for all that they have done. One, to set up the South Asian College and that was uh, Chandrahas Sajwala and Larry Lesto and uh, Barbara Amir. And then uh, we had uh, almost all of the presidents of ACCP visit Mumbai, India. And I know how much we appreciate that considering the long, long, long journey which they had to take to come to Mumbai. And it was Bern Mebom and then John Van Der Anker and Regent David Lehman and Dr. Derendorf and many others who have visited us and given us all a really, really a distillate and benefit of their knowledge and experience to us all. I'm also very, very thankful to ACCP for this year uh, giving me this award of uh, Nathaniel Quaid uh, Distinguished Service Award. Very thankful to that. Uh, in that uh, memorial lecture, I re-emphasized the importance of uh, global teamship uh, to uh, evolve clinical pharmacology both from drug discovery to patient care and even to disaster management. So it's really the global team that has worked together, uh, whether it is my students like Manoj Jadav here or my teachers or my colleagues from uh, ACCP and many others around the world. Uh, I think our students have benefited really quite a lot and maybe Manoj is going to tell more about how the students benefited in being the uh, chair for the, the outreach program. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Manu Chado. Uh, I am a clinical pharmacologist and uh, my association with ACCP and South Asian College of ACCP lasts for uh, almost 13 years. I joined as a student member, then became full member and eventually was given a recognition of a fellow. And in this my illustrious journey of 13 years, I have been fortunate to get mentors from both in India, like Dr. Shirsagar and many uh, senior uh, 
uh, regents and fellows like Dr. Derendorf, Dr. Hokas and many more have given uh, their insights on how to uh, excel in our discipline of clinical pharmacology. This uh, organization have uh, in joint way I would say SCCP and SCCCP have sharpened my skills in the areas of leadership, management and global outreach and therefore I strongly encourage all the young and budding scientists, uh, undergraduate, postgraduate and uh, postdoctoral students to actively get involved into this organization. You really have a strong uh, uh, platform to uh, diversify your skill sets and get professional guidance. And I think that uh, we will celebrate the uh, golden jubilee of the American College of Clinical Pharmacology in Mumbai as well next year. Uh, I am Nilima Akshir Sagar. I am Manoj Chato. We, we are, are ACCP. ACCP. Arun Ram, co-chair of the ACCP Education Committee. It's my honor to congratulate ACCP on its 50th anniversary. ACCP is accredited by ACCME and ACPE for CME and CPE credits that helps healthcare professionals deliver safe, cost-effective, compassionate care based on best practices and evidence. Education has been key for ACCP in the past, now, and surely in the future. ACCP is committed to ensuring that all its educational activities are free of commercial interest and bias. ACCP strictly adheres to the regulations set forth by ACCME and ACPE to provide high quality educational content which has the depth and focus on clinical pharmacology. We work together with the pharmacology community to develop exceptional educational events whether it's individual webinars or an entire annual meeting. Being involved with ACCP has allowed me to grow my professional knowledge and provided me with the opportunity to be involved with the community of passionate and like-minded people that makes this organization incredible. Congratulations again. I am Arun Ram, co-chair of the ACCP Education Committee. I am ACCP. School of Medicine. Here with the college, I'm a fellow and a member of the Board of Regents. I have been a member of ACCP since 1998, starting as a student member. During my tenure with the college, I had served on uh, multiple um, committees and currently I am one of the three representatives to the Council of uh, faculty and academic societies of the Association of American Medical Colleges. Together with my colleague Jim Boris and Diona Green, we are raising awareness of the importance of clinical pharmacology in medical education and medical practice. Medical education and our interprofessional and multidisciplinary approach to our medical education and um, our medical profession is the greatest strength of, of the college. Our goal is to improve knowledge, skill, and um, professional practice of physicians, scientists, pharmacists, and other healthcare professionals um, in uh, working in drug development, validation, and treatment of patients. I'm Jim okay. Burris. I'm a clinical professor of medicine and pharmacology at Georgetown University School of Medicine. I've been a member of ACCP since 1983 and like Vera have served on many committees and task forces for the college. The Council of Faculty and Academic Societies is one of the three main governing bodies for the Association of American Medical Colleges, the others being the Council of Deans and the Council of Teaching Hospitals. ACCP's participation in CFAS gives us a direct opportunity to impact policy and programs for medical schools throughout the United States and Canada. And that's why we are ACCP. ACCP.
happy mid-century. and then for the last four years I've been the co-chair of the Student Trainee and Young Professional Committee here at ACCP. The Student Trainee and Young Professional Committees provide several um, benefits to student trainee and young professional members. This includes mentorship that's open to all where we pair um, students, trainees, and young professionals with more senior or established mentors um, that are suited to their career goals and needs. We also host several events at the annual ACCP meeting. These events include a welcome breakfast, which allows for interaction between um, STIP members, um, new and old, and more senior men members and mentors. And this allows us to have interactions um, before the start of the meeting, so you have a familiar face um, during the meeting. We have a career panel discussion where we host um, speakers from industry, regulatory, and academia to talk about their career path and answer questions and give advice um, on the career path for STIP members. And then we usually also have a networking reception just for STIP members um, where you can network with the panel discussion speakers as well as other more senior members of ACCP. This provides a more intimate, informal environment that might feel um, the speakers are more approachable. And finally, we have student podium presentations. These are presentations for students and trainees. It provides a forum where they can discuss this with other student trainee and young professionals of ACCP, along with other established and senior mentors um, in a smaller, more intimate environment. It also provides a forum um, for trainees to showcase their work um, to a larger audience. I feel ACCP is dedicated to developing trainees and young professional members and that the membership is very involved and invested um, in developing um, people's careers. I am Amelia Deitman and I am ACCP. provides many wonderful opportunities for professional growth and development. As a faculty member at a prestigious university, one of the more meaningful opportunities that I have in mentoring students is to bring them along to a meeting. Coming to a meeting such as ACCP provides opportunities, unlike, unlike few others for students, to participate in, in educational programming, to meet future mentors and leaders in their fields, and oftentimes serves as a stimulus for their professional um, focus and, and future growth. I'm committed to investing in the lives of our students and into the future of our organization. Bringing students along to ACCP annual meetings is one small way to accomplish this. We are ACCP. Over the last 50 years, you have provided a great platform for students to network, uh, to uh, present uh, your work that you have done. And my name is Kayla Lin, and I am the student president of the ACCP Gator Student Chapter. And on behalf of the team, I would like to celebrate ACCP uh, 50th anniversary in 2019. First of all, I would like to share my experience as a student and the benefit of joining the student chapter. So the chapter actually provides exceptional support for students and trainees to interact and exchange ideas with renowned scientists in the field. But more importantly, we get leadership opportunities to develop essential skills that will be important for our research efforts, but also professional growth as well. Lastly, we also get to develop innovative, diverse and critical thinking skill sets while planning and execution of our educational event. 
So with that, we would like to thank you, ACCP, and we are ACCP Gators Vision Challenge. Hello ACCP. Today I am here sharing with you uh, what the ACCP Student Abstract Award has meant to me and my career. I would like to start uh, by you know saying that one of the highlights of my career in the so far or in the year 2013-2014 when I was a postdoctoral fellow at University of Florida was winning, winning the ACCP Student Abstract Award. The Student Abstract Award comes with a lot of benefits with it, and I was a, a beneficiary of those. So one of the biggest advantage that you can have of winning the Student Abstract Award is that you get free registration to ACCP meeting that year, so I benefited immensely from that. There is also a travel grant that comes along with it that helps with your stay and to bring you out there where the conference is. The second benefit I can really think of that I took full advantage of is to mingle and meet and network with the who's and who of the field uh, in the field of clinical pharmacology. And third advantage that I can think of is that it gave me the unique opportunity to have my poster and our research in the preterm neonates population. Uh, the poster that we had was showcased for three days. So definitely there was that increased visibility that my work and our team's work and uh, I had been in the limelight for three days uh, during the conference and I really appreciated that opportunity. It meant a lot to me as a student trainee uh, and, or as a postdoctoral fellow to have that opportunity then. What it also did for me is it paved the way for me for my future opportunities uh, such as working in the industry as a clinical pharmacology scientist and also later on to go into a dream role really or a dream job that I thoroughly enjoy working, at, working in as, as a clinical pharmacology reviewer at the Food and Drug Administration. And I think when I look back, it all just came together. But when I look at one of the pivotal turning points of my career, then ACCP Student Abstract Award happens to be one of them. And I am Amit Somani and I am ACCP. Kumar and I'm a member of ACCP um, and I think one of my favorite things about ACCP is that uh, there's such a diverse and intimate environment um, for us to be able to interact with one another at the conference. Um, I think particularly it's really great that um, you have young professionals and trainees who are still students and graduate uh, studies as well as really high-level senior level people who could be considered experts in their fields and they they all come together at the meeting to interact with one another um, as well as uh, just just the fact that they're there to offer mentorship to the younger students um, so the, re the relationships that you can make um, here at ACCP between uh, both people who are in industry as well as people who are in academia and even uh, people in, in government regulatory agencies is really, I think, a unique um, opportunity that ACCP provides to its members. Certainly is, is something that can stay with you um, throughout your career and um, as you grow as a person, um, regardless of whether or not you're somebody who wants to stay within the same uh, organization your entire career. Um, or, or somebody who wants to, to try out different things and explore different experiences. Because you can always use that time to, to collaborate and build relationships with people who have um, sort of complementary experiences to your own. So I'm Prag Kumar and I am ACCP. Joan Korth Bradley, and I'm a member of ACCP, the American College of Clinical Pharmacology. I want to invite you to join our organization. One of the main benefits that I experience is the availability of continuing education. 
available for both clinical pharmacists and for physicians. These excellent, high quality, and timely programs will add much to your clinical practice and scientific acumen. They're available at the annual meeting as well as webinars throughout the year, in our journals, and on demand 24-7. My name is Joan Corth Bradley, and I am ACCP. My name is John Vandenanker. I am the immediate past president of the American College of Clinical Pharmacology. The clinical, I'd like to congratulate the American College of Clinical Pharmacology on their 50th anniversary. Being the immediate past president, I had the opportunity to be many years uh, connected with HCCP as their officer and being board of the, a part of the Board of Regents. Interestingly, HCCP has a diverse group of people coming from different areas of the world. Non-US based people are around 10 to 20 percent and we're working very hard to increase the amount of people coming from outside of the US. During my, my tenure as president, I had the opportunity to travel to the Middle East and also to travel to Japan, uh, representing the American College and trying to recruit people to our, um, to our, to our membership. Members are quite diverse. They are or MDs, PharmDs, PhDs, registered nurses, very diverse and very and working in different uh, backgrounds. Some people are from the FDA, some people are from pharmaceutical industry, some people from academia, some people are from CROs. In other words, we, we, we encompass all, all kinds of different people from different areas in the field of the discipline of clinical pharmacology. What we're trying to do, and that's number one in our in the mission of our college, is to try to preserve excellent education in the field of clinical pharmacology. We put a lot of resources in doing that and also what we can provide still, not easy anymore these years, but we will provide still both accreditation for physicians as well as pharmacists. To increase our membership of the American College of Clinical Pharmacology, we reach out to try to collaborate with other um, uh, groups and uh, societies. So we work currently with the Cardiac Safety Consortium Group and also with the International Society of Pharmacometrics. My name is John Vandenanker, I am ACCP.